All right, we are now joined by our poll sitter for tomorrow's Enjoy Illinois 300, Michael McDowell, driver of the number 34 Front Row Motorsports Ford. Congratulations, Michael. Uh, why don't you talk us through your lap there? Yeah, it was great. Um, you know, I'm so thankful that we got practice and qualifying in, right? When we looked last night and this morning, we were like, ah, not sure if this is going to happen. Um, but yeah, it, you know, really this practice went really smooth. Um, we unloaded pretty close. Had to work a little bit on the balance, but you know, with this type of practice and qualifying, you just have to be close when you unload. And uh, Travis Peterson and uh, Griff and all the guys did a great job of bringing us a fast forward Mustang again. Um, you know, it's the second round isn't new to us this year, um, but I feel like we've got into the second round several times and then not made that next jump in that that next round where. You know, we might be third, fourth, or fifth that first round, and then, you know, end up eighth, ninth, or tenth in that second round. So I'm just thankful that we were able to, um, you know, make all the right adjustments and and give ourselves, you know, a great shot at, at getting the pole. I mean, obviously, we had tremendous speed, and, and so that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, there's a, a couple forward Mustangs up front, so that's good. And, you know, tomorrow, with track position and pit stall selection and all the things that are super important here, this is a, you know, great start of the weekend for us. And we just got to maximize the opportunity. We got to capitalize and we have to execute. And, um, you know, we need a win desperately to get into the playoffs. And, and we know that. And we know that the next, you know, four to five weeks are, are great opportunities for us. And so um, we're kicking it off right. All right, we're going to open it up for questions. We will start with Reed Spencer. Reed Spencer with the NASCAR Wire. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, three real quick ones. Um, first, you and Cindric were the only two guys to go to third gear. In hey, the, don't tell anybody. Don't say in the that. Last, in the last two corners. Yeah. Um, how did you figure that out? Ooh, I don't want to answer that. Um, <laughs> a study in preparation and execution. Um, well, I'll run you through it, okay? Because everybody's going to look anyway. So... Last year, we were third or fourth in practice, uh, had a really fast car. We were on the, you know, the 10 lap average, average, everything was really good, top five car. And I thought with the speed that you'd pick up in qualifying and, and the extra grip that you had, that that extra downshift would probably overslow it and, and would hurt you. So, you know, I, my plan last year was to run fourth in three and four, and I did. And, um, you know, I lost a 10th and a half in that corner um, compared to all the guys that downshifted. And so studying that, looking at it and highlighting it, I just knew that that's what I needed to do. Um, and then the flip side of it, the only one that made the second round um, before I went out, the downshift was Austin Zendrick and everybody else ran fourth in turn three. And so then you're scratching your head as you're sitting in the car. Oh, all that study and all that planning, you know, what do you do? And, and the thing that I've learned with this car, and, and maybe it's with experience, but I feel like in particular with this car, when it comes to qualifying, you just have to execute your plan. And I planned all week to do that, and I'm just going to execute my plan right, wrong, or indifferent. And so I just committed to it, and, and fortunately – we're on the right side of it because it could easily gone the other way. Um, and so, yeah, that's, what's tough about this car is, is you're, you're really splitting hairs trying to find that extra 10th. Right. And, and that's what the difference was. It was a 10th between had I downshifted last year versus not. And, um, you don't want to leave anything on the table. And so just really had a plan executed the plan and it turned out to be the right one. And second, um, uh, just how, how big a source of pride is it to, do this on a 1.25 mile quirky speedway rather than a super speedway yeah um so uh, you know talladega and atlanta were special they are getting the pole there was special because it's it always is every week in such a team effort we all know that you can't go fast without fast race cars but in particular at talladega and atlanta the driver's not a big part of whether or not you're going to qualify well. You still have to execute. You still got to get through the gears. And I, so I don't want to take anything away from, from that standpoint. But it really is a matter of how fast of a race car your team brought you, right? And it's still the same today. It really is. Like even today, the poll today is because I had a really fast race car. 
I had more pressure to execute my part um, at a flat track like this where you're up shifting twice, down shifting twice each corner, um, you know, heavy brake zones, all those things. So it's more rewarding from that standpoint to go out there and execute and do it. Um, and, you know, the biggest thing is, is over the years, I haven't had a lot of opportunities at this, you know, to qualify on the pole or have a shot at the front row and things like that. Um, and as crazy as this sounds, I just had to remember to 15 years ago, 16 years ago when I sat on like 10 ARCA poles and I just didn't overthink it. I just went out there and did my deal. And if your car is fast enough, you get the pole, right? And so I just went into that second round thinking like that, like you don't have to do anything special. You don't have to overthink it. You just got to go execute what you, what you know you have to do and, and not overdo it. So I'm glad it worked out because there's been times this year where I felt like we've had shots at the pole, maybe not quite as fast as we were today, but you know, third, fourth place car. And like I said, we ended up sixth or seventh and you kind of leave bummed because you're like, oh man, you know, but today we did everything right. And the car was, was really close from the time we unloaded and made all the right adjustments. And so I'm, I'm proud of the total team effort that we have. And you know, there's, a lot of good things that are happening at front row right now and you know with the news this week of expanding to three charters and the growth that we're seeing and the performance that we're seeing is is awesome and to back that up this week with you know a pole on a on a legit hard racetrack to to go get a pole i feel like is um you know validating for everything that they're doing Dave Moody, Motor Racing Network, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio. How proud are you in your ability and your team's ability to continue to perform at this high level considering, you know, your status for next year and the, the whole lame duck thing? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're not a lame duck. Um, I don't really know where the um, terminology originates from. I, you probably could tell me because you're, you're pretty good with words. You're a wordsmith, I feel like. But it's I hate lame duck. It's so lame. You know, it's a lame word. Um I am as motivated as I've ever been to make sure that we win and make the playoffs. And, and for so many reasons, right? But m more than ever, because I am making a change and I want to, I want to finish what we started and I want to, I want to do what I know we can do. And we have a group of people right now that we can win races and I just have to do my part. And, you know, to me, it's more of not letting those guys down. And also to me, it's Bob Jenkins has taken me from a guy that was running 30th every weekend to winning the Daytona 500 and winning Indianapolis and sitting on three poles this year. I'm going to give him everything I have because that's what you do when somebody has changed your life, right? And so it's the only way that I know that we can do it. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? We will go to Lee. That being said, Lee Spencer, Sirius XM NASCAR Racing and Catchments.com. Um, that being said, is there any animosity at all knowing that you're kind of getting traded in for a new model? Um, and I mean, I know you're going to give 110% because you, you're a racer and you don't know any different than that. But, you know, I asked Bob what is, uh, not sorry, I asked Jerry what the options are and he said, well, I want to find somebody like Michael McDowell. <laughs> Um, you know, that I can mold into Michael McDowell. And it's like, well, if you got the real, if you have the original, why would you screw around with that? Yeah. And I'm just kind of curious, you know, does it chap you a little bit that, um, you know, you just mm. couldn't finish out your career there? Um, that's a, a great question. It's, a, it's an honest question, and I appreciate it. I think that the first week or two as I was navigating, you know, kind of what was in front of us, maybe a little bit, but not now, and the reason not now is because it always works out. And I know in my heart what I was supposed to do, and I think Bob knew in his heart what he was supposed to do, even though it doesn't always make sense. Um, and it doesn't always make sense, but there's so many moving parts behind the scenes that not everybody knows, right? And, and I don't mean like a gossip, it's not what I mean, but probably the best thing for front row motorsports and for bob jenkins is for me not to be in that 34 car as crazy as that sounds uh, because of what it's going to allow him to do and what it's going to allow him to build his race team into and and yes am i disappointed about that sometimes a little bit but i also know for me 
that I have a great opportunity in front of me and I have um, a long future in front of me and obviously I'm not done yet, right? And, and so I feel great about my decision and I think Bob feels good about his decision as well. And there's no animosity. There's no hurt feelings. Sometimes it's just the way it works out. And, and I feel that this is how it's supposed to work out. Go ahead. Hey, I'm Benjamin Hockman from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Um, to win tomorrow, what's it going to take, and what have you learned about this track? Well, it's going to take track position, which we start out with, and we have, and so we got to execute that. Um, I've seen it be really powerful here before, just um, you know, in 2022, I believe. Um, we stayed out and, um, and took the lead and, and led like 50, 60, I don't know, somebody – Where's the statistician? A decent amount of laps. And that was really eye-opening of like, hey, we just got to get out in front and we're going to be okay. And last year we had a, you know, a top 10 car here as well. And so I'm not super shocked by our speed. Um, you know, I think it was exceptional today in qualifying for sure. And, I, you know, tomorrow it's just about executing, you know, that initial start and pit stops. And there's so many variables. You know, there's so many things that happen. And, you know, when you're the leader or if you are still leading, you know, different strategies that people take, two tires here is an option and, you know, staying out and, and different things have been an option here. And so, you know, you're going to have to be versatile. You're going to have to be able to keep the lead. And then if you do lose track position because of altering strategies, you got to be able to get through traffic. So, so much happens on Sunday on a race day. Um, you know, today, I, I always say this and this not just because i'm sitting here right now but saturday is a race of its own and today we won the race and tomorrow we'll focus on winning that race um but today we executed well and did everything we needed to do and if we do that tomorrow we'll have a shot at winning the race and and but to win a cup race you have to be perfect mm -hmm. and and we've seen it it's tough right you have past champions that haven't won a race in a long time we we've seen really really good guys and really good teams that have the speed and are so close but everything has to go perfect and so um, we know what we have to do we've been in this spot before as far as needing the win to get in the playoffs and having speed and you know we have to rise to the occasion and i, th I think we will let's go to bob uh, bob pockers fox sports you touched on it. do you feel like you have to win to make the playoffs as far out as you are yeah um, i think i do i mean if we run like this every weekend and we can score 20 stage points a week then no but the way that it looks right now you know i think that we have to win and honestly that's the approach that's always been the approach for us is even last year when we were close to pointing our way in which we we would have pointed our way in even without the win we knew that we were going to sonoma and we were going to indy and we were going to chicago road course and we were going to those places to win the race and our strategy was to win the race and and it'll be the same this time. And we're not trying to score points to to point our way into the playoffs. If we happen to do that because we're that fast and we're executing that well, then great. Um, but I'm not counting on that. I'm counting on going and winning in the next two or three weeks and not having to worry about it. And I'm curious, do you, are you surprised Larson hasn't gotten a waiver yet? And do you have any opinion on whether he should get a waiver for not making it to so the start? I don't see the other side of this point at all. I think if it was me and I did it and I think that that's a different situation and I hate to say it like that, but Kyle Larson is going to win five or six, seven races this year to sit here and say that he's not going to get a waiver because he brought, you know, he tried to do the double and brought a tremendous amount of eyeballs on our sport and a tremendous amount of eyeballs on IndyCar and just helped motorsports all together is crazy. And so I know that there's arguments to that, but I mean, come on, we're talking about the best driver that's ever sat in a, a stock car and we're not gonna give him a pass. That's crazy. We're gonna take our final question right back there. Cole Kusman, Arizona Republic. Congratulations, Michael. Um, obviously in a great position tomorrow, starting on the pole, first pit stall. Um, but I'm curious, how did your car handle in traffic during practice? I know. Conditions will be different tomorrow for the race, but um, yeah, such a critical thing, track position in this race. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that was fun about today's practice was it wasn't split, right, as all of us out there at once. So, like it or not, you were going to be in traffic. There was no clean racetrack. Um, 
which kind of reminded me of the old days of happy hour, right? You'd roll out for happy hour and there'd be 43 of you and you'd be nose to tail and you'd roll out and give yourself two or three car lengths gap and hammer down. And so uh, we didn't run a whole lot in clean air. I was I was always catching somebody or or attempting to catch somebody or passing somebody. Um, and so I think that I got a good feel for what we need for tomorrow. But, you know, when it's 8 a.m. or whenever we rolled out, right, 830, it's cool, overcast, slightly misty. That's not going to be tomorrow. And and so, like I said, I really separate the two days. Today's all about one lap or two laps. Um, it's about qualifying. And um, tomorrow, you know, we know what we need to do. We've raced here before. We have a good notebook. Um, but, you know, practice is not an indication of what you're going to have tomorrow. It's just not. And so we just have to make the right adjustments overnight, knowing that, that it's going to be warmer and sunnier and the track's going to lose, you know, tremendous amount of grip compared to what we had. And it's going to take a lot of rubber and you're going to move around and you're going to be up in that third lane on both, both ends. And, and so, yeah, you got to have, you got to have, um, you know, a good notebook that you can lean into. And, and like I said, I feel good about that just based on the fact that we had a top 10 car here last year. So. All right. Congratulations. Thank and thanks you for the time. Yeah. Thanks.